Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Last night I was playing cheesy 80s music when we were doing our last bit of work before going to bed, and I was actually playing this. And, oh, wow, you know, what was that all about? Remember this? Corey Hart, I wear my sunglasses at night. Well, you might have a reason to wear your sunglasses at night soon. This is an interesting little image. What is this? Well, it's it's the Aurora Borealis. Now, the Carrington event in 1859 was a powerful solar storm that smashed into the Earth, caused telegraph wires to spark. It turned night literally into day. And you had Aurora that was observed as far north as Queensland, Australia, and Aurora Borealis as far as the Caribbean and Hawaii. People in the northern U.S. could read the newspaper at night from the Aurora's light, and telegraph systems went haywire. Think about this. We just had a uh, eclipse, you know, a very, very notable eclipse that, you know, the guides let us know meant that really we were transitioning at that point, stepping out of the Kali Yuga finally and stepping into the Bronze Age. Dwapara. But, you know, again, this is a long transition. This control structure is based on technology. Technology is how this control system really controls us. And so it is the sun that's actually triggering the ascension process for the most part with us here on the planet. And the sun is the key agent. And again, if you think back, I remember being a little kid, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't the way it is now as far as putting on sunscreen and all. And now I think a lot of people are realizing sunscreen itself is causing a lot of problems, just as the food does. You know, instead of um, just saying, "Oh, okay, you didn't put sunscreen on, you got skin cancer." Now people are starting to realize. Well, I probably got skin cancer because of my diet and because of, you know, what I'm taking into my body in more ways than one. And the lack of sun does contribute to the spread of cancer. Again, you know, the sun is the key bringer of life to the to the solar system. Of course, the sun is so key and it is the sun that will at some point in time cause the literal split and we are getting very very close to the split much closer to the split uh what do we mean by the split we are going to go on divergent paths not everybody is going on the ascension path you know some beings are going to choose to stay in the system and are going to choose the darkness instead of the light and you know that is again up to them as we are all consciousness having a temporary human experience Mm -hmm. sorry we we are we are we are so we're everybody's kind of watching this you know at the edge of their seats saying you know is this the time is this the time is this going to be when the sun is going to put us all back to the dark age you know i mean we're looking at it here huge sunspot um you know, it says it's it's really big, rivals the Karen, Carrington's um, big sunspot. So we're kind of watching it. And, you know, this is something that I, I don't really like to talk about, but this is a big enough sunspot. I think it warrants a, an, a conversation here. A lot of technology could be wiped out. So this is good and this is also very, very bad. There's a lot of people who depend on the technology for life-saving circumstances and just to keep them alive day to day. They might need oxygen. They might need, you know, certain lights. They they might need surgery, you know, and this is something that could really wipe out a lot of this technology. On the flip side of it, the technology is going to wipe us out. So it's, it's going to take control of us and it's one of those things where something has to happen and the light and earth and nature always wins, always wins. So are we at that time? Are, are we at that precipice right now where the sun has said, okay, this is enough. It's time for me to come in and, and step in and, and wipe the slate clean and, and help help my children, help the humans. Um, 
or is it just going to kind of bypass and and we go on and then until the next time that comes but this kind of has me a little bit nervous well it's the timing and so what what you're seeing here is they're comparing this sunspot ar3664 it's grown so large and not only the size which rivals the sunspot that gave us the carrington event it's even even the shape even the shape is rivaling, rivaling it. So there's a similarity here. And when I looked this morning and I saw, wow, holy crap, excuse my French there. Look at this. We got another. We have an X 2.2. And the likelihood of more X flares is at 60% right now. So more than likely, more than likely, there's more coming. You know, this has gotten so big busy as you can see these four x classes and by the way cme's produ produced you've heard of uh cannibal uh cme's where one catches up to the other we're getting hit with a wave it's going to be just a wave of cme's incoming so lately uh you can see the kp is is pretty low it's between one and two now interestingly enough that can also trigger us absolutely when the KP is in a, at a very, very low place, um, it, it can increase in some people uh, their psychic ability. And we're all increasing. Any, anybody that has not gone down the route of loading yourself up with all sorts of you know, pesticides and GMOs and all the nanu nanu, so, you know, that's the real thing that hits me, too, is, is the likelihood of shorting out a lot of the nanotechnology that's in our bodies, because everybody is infested with nanotechnology. As your frequency goes up, the nanotechnology is going to be un uncomfortable in you. And I went through a period um, about a year, year and a half ago, I want to say a year and a half ago, maybe even a little bit more where it was like the nanotechnology had to escape from my body and it was and you know again it'll look um, different for each person but as your frequency goes up you're going to be in you're going to be uninhabitable for it it's it's not going to want to resonate in you because your frequency is is going to cause it to dysfunction this is, you know, part of what's going on on the ascension path. So again, hold your frequency. How do you raise your frequency? Well, again, eat, eat as organic as possible, detox regularly. So things like intermittent fasting. There's so many different ways of detoxing. Um, and we've covered many and, and many other people have whole channels on just detoxing. So again, <clears throat> go into those playlists. And we are um, separating stuff into uh, playlists on Patreon as well, creating playlists over there. Um, the, but, you know, detoxing. And then for us, it's mantras, meditation, yoga, and qigong. You know, accelerating the ascension process by prioritizing the spiritual practice. And the other thing you know, is we don't take any pharmaceuticals, no pharmaceuticals. Cindy was on a thyroid pill for a long time, but she's been able to manipulate her diet on out of it. And in diet, you know, the dietary changes have eliminated the need for her to take any sort of uh, pharmaceutical at all. And she was in the system until she lost her best friend to the system and because of the system. And that event triggered her, you know, losing a best friend in, in, in the prime of the life. Um, that shouldn't have happened for another 30, 40 years, <clears throat> that will smack you in the face. And so it, it prompted her to get out of the system. As the system is one <clears throat> that is about the system, it doesn't, it doesn't prioritize human uh, expansion of consciousness, that's for sure. It wants to trap our consciousness, keep us in a lower frequency. So this is is really massive news now it's coming at a time uh where you know it's making me say okay we're we're doing our last bit of shopping now <clears throat> because I, i'm not going to be caught on the road <laughs> in a you know any sort of event that's going to look like um 
an EMP and not saying that that's a definite but we've had warnings so I've shared we've shared with you guys not just ourselves but several of our closest friends have seen uh, us get stuck and in in an event that it looks like it could be uh, an EMP or a CME uh, hard to determine and this is what we've seen too I had that vision and I told Cindy about that vision so uh, we're not going to do our usual shopping rounds we're going to do them early and I've been you know stocking up more anyway uh, redundancies of water filtration and everything as well as backup power supplies um, because it's go time the, the guides did show back in December 2022 that we had 1.5 years <clears throat> until there'd be volcano activity on the current timeline and you would see troops on the US uh, soil in in battle uh, and the troops looked like it was China and Russia and I've always had the feeling that before that happens, as well as having visions of Cascadia and San Andreas go, I, I had those visions. Cindy had a vision where they all went. She saw the New Madrid going too. And I do think it's at this, um, I think the likelihood is it's at this juncture of time, unless we can uh, push into a new timeline I feel it's very likely to happen over the upcoming uh, weeks. Now, in Vedic astrology, when you look to what's going on, uh, Joni Patri, again, somebody that we do respect for her abilities, uh, it, she's very good Vedic astrologer. Some might say she's you know one of the best one or two in the entire country. Um, she just came straight out and was warning people, you know, basically the 10th through 19th, be careful <laughs> and and don't venture too far away from home uh, in this time period um, because she was sawing some some sort of attack on the US coming and the word she got was San S-A-N and she was leaning towards uh, San Antonio but <clears throat> I think you know maybe uh, what some other of our family members when I mentioned this previously uh, some of them said do you think she's seeing the San Andreas Oh, yeah, that makes sense to me because, again, I think Cascadia and the San Andreas go and uh, the New Madrid. And then we have <clears throat> the X marks the spot. So that energy of those eclipses has saturated in, settled in, and they're using technology to trigger those events. And it could very well be that those events happen alongside what looks like a limited strike on... Um, on between the U.S. and 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 uh, Russia, or perhaps expanded between U.S. U.K. maybe some other nations like um, France as well, and Russia before uh, the BRICS nations really really go. So, you know, it it would make sense to me that we might have big quakes and then might have two three week period of chaos and just confusion before the actual invasion of the u.s and so that's why we're sharing this mm -hmm. yeah there's there's so much going on so it's not just you know one layer of information that kind of ha has us watching this very very closely it's several layers of information that's all pointing to the same time frame and that's when we do really really pay attention because I'm not one who wants to get people on edge for absolutely no reason or just you know for a very small small reason no I, I'm here to talk to people when we feel that there is a legitimate concern and people need to stock up we're gonna say something you know I, I think that's we've been consistent with that doing the very best we can to watch the world and see when there is a legitimate threat we say something um but yeah i mean mike is so so right when it comes to the technology it it has saved lives but it's also taken lives it's taken many many lives so where are we at now with the technology is it saving more or is it taking more i'm not going to answer that i think you guys already know but you answer that and this is the part where nature steps in and says, okay, well, this is a problem. Um, things need to grow. We need to continue to expand. 
and nature is going to do what it needs to do to expand there's no stopping nature i mean she's she's slow but she's perfect and she's precise um she might not she might be uh some people might call nature unfair but she is just so she looks at things through a certain lens and it's like okay i need to expand here because this is growth and then that's what she does you know and there might be other consequences to that but the main topic is expansion needs to happen and this might be that time yes absolutely so you have the first and second cmes that are combining uh into one impact on may 10th and then another one that's going to come later um actually you know i would not be surprised if if we get some the something bigger than what we had so far so the biggest so far x 2.2 uh, if you look at just the last 48 hours, but you know, there's there's been just an awful lot of activity I wouldn't be surprised at all if we get something much more significant. So um, What's going on right now? I mean you got so much geoengineering going on so much flooding going on uh, You have obviously all, Everything going on with the war over here in Ukraine. They're warning uh, citizens nationwide power outages coming amid massive Russian strikes um, you know, it, it's gearing up to go to a different level. And, you know, you have just tension everywhere with Israel and Gaza and the Palestinian uh, crisis ongoing. You have so much tension in our uh, in our own colleges with with uh, so much so much protests ongoing. Just think of the chaos if all of a sudden we have major outages across the country can you imagine you know la and new york going dark all of a sudden uh it, it, <laughs> with with the level of of chaos that's already in place and tens of millions of illegal immigrants you know sleeping on the streets or in shelters or in some places have been in more and more direct conflict with those that have already been there you know this is the time again to get yourself out of the way as much as possible hopefully you are out of the way hopefully you are as prepared as possible um you know this is all we can do is is just let you guys knowing um last night was very very curious because uh, i was getting these visions of what might be um some sort of technology that's going to be used because again they're telegraphing uh what looks to be a limited nuclear exchange and everybody's used that word nuclear and 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 putin himself and 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 russian um other russian politicians medvedev number two and you know uh, all over they've used that word saying you know if russia's existence is threatened we will go you know nuclear yet they're not going to be allowed to by beings that have higher technology than that but it doesn't mean that they're not going to say it wasn't a, a limited nuclear strike i think that's what they're going to say it was but we won't know the difference between something more like that rods of god technology because what i saw was um was like something heavy in metal uh coming down from space and impacting and it was curious because it, the impact was so strong that it it was sending all sorts of debris up into the air and i saw people looking and and trailing that debris up in the air and trying to judge to run right r run left run back run forward because the debris is going to come back down um i totally believe the beirut blast was a test and people will say well that was just you know they said you know what that was that was all sorts of you know again um rudimentary the lowest type of technology uh for creating blasts just sitting there in a the warehouse and that's what it, well that's that's the again that's the official story sure uh, i don't think that's the case though and many people cited stuff coming from the sky and then that happened that was that was a test of what they plan to release uh not just in the u.s <clears throat> but i think in russia too 
So, you know, again, uh, the biggest military targets and, and the, the heaviest populated cities would be their primary uh, choices uh, to a degree. But so they, they want to control and hurt us. They don't want to necessarily uh, cull the entire flock like, you know, ranchers do. Uh, you know, they don't want to do that. They want to herd. They need to push us, nudge us into certain directions. And that's what all this is about. It's, it's about compliance. It is absolutely about compliance. And here's another uh, Boeing 737 crashes. During takeoff in Senegal, 11 people were injured here. Uh, and that's a company that's very non-compliant when it comes to safety issues. So prepare, get your sunglasses ready for some night viewing. Maybe it'll be interesting out there. Um, and very interesting when you think about the timing of it. Think about that. We had the eclipse, you know, turning daylight into darkness. And then will we end up with a Carrington type event that turns the darkness into daylight? It really is a battle of light and darkness on the, on the highest levels. Mm -hmm. Indeed it is. Be safe out there. Get prepared. Take care. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.